Good evening. Welcome back to Cleveland Community Chapel for our Old Testament studies in the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, we've worked our way all the way through 1 and 2 Samuel to chapter 4. Chapter 4 is 12 easy verses, and it's just there for, a, well, it's for a historical reason. It's there, but always the Bible has more than history. It uh, lays the background to David, a little bit about what kind of man David was, and uh, I guess the moral teaching from it is, is um, always do the right thing, even if it's politically advantageous to you to not do the right thing. Do, always do the right thing. So uh, Saul's been killed. His son Jonathan's been killed. Uh, David's king of Judah, still kind of a divided nation here, and Saul's uh, son, other son, Ishbosheth, is in line for the throne on the Israel side. But uh, like often happened back then and still in that part of the world today, often in these uh, other countries, uh, when uh, there's a change in the throneship, there may be a murder and an assassination of this because everybody's clamoring and fighting to get to that throne. So that's kind of what's going on in chapter 4. When Saul's son, this is Ishbosheth, I believe, heard that Abner, who had been Saul's and now his uh, general in the army, remember he had been murdered, and David uh, took care of the guys who murdered him. And so Saul's son now hears that Abner's dead in, in Hebron, that uh, Ishbosheth, his hands were feeble or he lost heart. And all the Israelites were troubled. And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands. Ishbosheth had, uh, had two men who were other captains in his army, bands of soldiers. And their names was, the name of one was Baanah, the name of the other, Rechab. Baanah and Rechab is all we need to remember here. That if you want more detail, the Bible says they were the sons of Remon Abirathite, of the children of Benjamin, for Beeroth also was reckoned to Benjamin. And the Beerothites fled Gidom and were sojourners there until the day that this was written. And Jonathan, Saul's son, remember he was killed in the same battle with Saul, but he had a son, a crippled boy. He was lame of his feet. And he was five years old when the tidings of Saul and Jonathan uh, came out of Jezreel that his daddy and grandpa had been killed. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became, so he's, he's five years old. His nurse going to take him and run and for safety. And she's dropped the boy. And that's how he became a cripple. He became lame. And his name was, and you need to remember this because it's going to be important way on over through the scriptures here, how to pronounce his name, Mephibosheth. His name is Mephibosheth. That's important. You'll see why much later. So all this is laying the background that, hey, there's a fight for the throne. Now that Saul's dead, there's a vacuum and everybody's trying to take it over. So um, Ishbosheth would have been the one in line, I think, at this time for the throne. But the sons of Rimon and Beeroth, those two that we just read about, Rechab and Baana, they went and they came in the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on a bed at noon. So they knew that though Ishbosheth, he usually took him a nap in the heat of the day. So his two captains of bands, they came slipping in and uh, at nap time. And they came thither into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat. They came to get something. They acted like they had business there. But they smote him under the fifth rib. We've seen that saying before when they killed Abner. They stuck a dagger under his fifth rib and killed him. And Rechab and Banna, his brother, escaped. So now they've killed Ishbosheth, these two guys have. So when they came to the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, and they smote him and they slew him. And they didn't just slew him or killed him. They beheaded Ishbosheth. And they took his head. And they get through the plain all night. They traveled a great distance. They're going to take that head as a trophy to King David, try to carry favor with him. Say, look, we've killed uh, your competitor over here, Ishbosheth. You can be king over the whole Judah and Israel now. And they brought the head of Ishbosheth to David, who was in Hebron. And they said to the king, Behold the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, which sought your life. 
The Lord's avenged my Lord and the king this day of Saul and his seed. His seed be killed Ishbosheth too. It's all yours, David. They they think like the Amalekite did, who came bearing news about how he killed Saul, that he's going to get rewarded of David because he saw them as competitors. And David said, "No, you you shouldn't have." You remember he had him killed because he did the wrong thing. He killed the king of Israel. So verse 9, it's sort of the same story. It happens again. These people keep killing people and bringing over there and think David's going to reward them. So David answered Rechab and Banna, his brother, the sons of Rimon, the Berathite, and said unto them, As the Lord lives, who's to redeem my soul out of all adversity, when one told me, saying, Behold, Saul's dead, thinking they've brought good tidings, I took hold of him and I slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings? If I did to him that way, how much more, verse 11, how much more when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed? David recognized that Ishbosheth had a right to Saul's throne. He was his son. He didn't do nothing wrong. Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? And David commanded his young men, and they slew them. He gave them capital punishment. And he cut off their hands and their feet, which I guess were what they performed their wickedness with. They cut their hands off to show that, hey, they did something bad with their hands, and their feet slipped in there. He cut them off, too. So he hung, hung their bodies up without hands and without feet, hanged them up over the pool in Hebron so everybody could see that's the way we treat people that do such heinous crimes. But they took the head of Ishbosheth, David's men did, and they buried it respectfully in the sepulcher or in the tomb of Abner, where now you got two murder victims in their head and Abner's body in Hebron. So those little 12 verses just kind of set some of the background about still the struggle for the, for the throne as we're still dealing with a divided nation here of Israel and Judah. See you next week.